friends, it's Gwen. I'm back today with a Christmas scrapbook tutorial and we are stash busting. I'm using Hey Santa collection from Crate Paper and this cut file from Cut To You. I have gone ahead off camera and backed the design. I've used pattern papers for the title portion. And did you see Santa back there? His beard has been backed in vellum. I've created a frame for my background and I have added stitching around the edge. And here's the plan, photo at the top and then my title for the page being underneath that. I am being brave today and using some acrylic paint. This one is a Dina Wakely. It's in a really pretty pale pink. And I'm going to use my brayer to apply it. I have done nothing at all to the background. This is just American Crafts white cardstock. And yeah, I actually really like the brayer. A couple of reasons. I don't get very messy. Uh, the, the brayer does and so does that acrylic plate. But me personally, I don't get very messy. And I like that I have a lot of control over where the paint will go. I am pretty inexperienced when it comes to adding paint and things to my layout. And I do like how with the brayer, I can sort of hold the photo up and I can hold the cut file in position and then apply the brayed paint underneath that. I have struggled in the past knowing where to put the mixed media when I'm making my backgrounds, and I found that this sort of works really well for me. The key is to really know where your elements are going to go on the page, and then you can add the mixed media underneath it. You'll also notice that I didn't add very much because I didn't need to, and that means that the background paper stays nice and flat. I didn't get any warping at all really happy with the end result in terms of that. We do however need to talk about this collection and I will get to that as we go along. With the mixed media all nice and dry I can go ahead and attach the cut file and my photo. I am working from biggest element to smallest element here just to get those big pieces locked into position. I also found this chipboard piece that says very merry Christmas and I want to get it locked into position as well. It is quite large. I am going to raise up my photo on foam and then I'm going to nestle that chipboard piece in against the right hand side and see how the little banner pieces at the bottom sit perfectly over the A and R. That was by design. Next I'm going to finish off the title for the page. So currently it says Dear Santa and then underneath I'm going to use these really thin uh, thickers and use the words we've been good. Working with multi-word titles can be a bit tricky, especially in terms of positioning the words on the page. And I have found these alignment guides to be so, so helpful. I like to place the letters so they are half over the alignment guide and then the other half is sticking out over the edge. And I really love that you can now move this around as one piece. I can now audition these words all over the page if I want to. I find it also really, really good for making sure the alphas are very centered on your layout. So yeah, you can get like millimeter perfect. Once you're happy with their position, you can then press them onto your layout and very gently pull away the alignment guide. The E did come away there, but that's still only one letter that I need to reposition in that whole row of alphas. And I think that's a good test because those are foam and they're very thin. There's not a lot um, to grip onto the layout. So often I find it very, very easy to pull away the guide and then just have this perfectly placed title. If you're looking for a set, there is a link in the description box below, along with all of my other favorite scrapbook supplies. At this point, the main elements on the layout are in place. And as I mentioned earlier, we are gonna be working from largest elements to smallest elements. So I do wanna have a flick through the embellishments for the collection. At this point, I'm really just looking for things that I think might work. So anything that definitely won't work goes back into the bowl. And as I go through this pile, the bowl then gets pushed to the side. So I'm only left with elements that I think could work for my project. It was doing this process that I actually found a bit of a problem with the collection. I did find a couple of elements that I really want to use, including this red bow. I'm all about them bows, and I really like that rainbow icon that's above it. 
There were, however, quite a few embellishments that I had to put back in the bowl. I've moved on to the chipboard pieces now, and I am going to repeat that same process. I'm going to pull out the things that I think might work. Often, too, if I think I know where they're going to be placed, I will place them at this point. Just an initial thought. I try to make really quick decisions here and go with my first gut feeling. And I noticed the same thing happened. The same thing that I found in the embellishment pack was also happening in the chipboard pack. I wasn't actually left with many options. There weren't many pieces that I felt would fit on the page. It's an interesting one because quite often when I do that process, I'm actually left with lots of choices and I have to further refine. But when I was looking at these elements, it was the opposite problem. I was like, I don't think I have enough here to do my usual style of embellishing. I did have another look through the embellishments and I was just trying to figure out why that might be. Some of the exclusions were based on color and that's pretty usual, but the main problem was the size of everything. Most of the embellishments that I have left in this collection are really quite large and there's definitely not a balance between large, medium and small. Now this probably wouldn't have been such a big problem except that I have cut that cut file out quite big and then I've also gone ahead and added three more words to it. I really don't have a lot of real estate to work with so I did go ahead and use what I could. I was like, you know what, okay, these these are the elements that I'm going to add and maybe I'll just have to keep the design a little bit simpler. That's okay. I did also find the sticker sheet. So this collection did have one of those and there were a couple of elements that I could use, including this little journal tab. I thought that was a good way to add a little bit of detail to the left hand corner of my photo without adding any sort of big bulky items. I did also find a cut apart sheet and see the numbers at the bottom there that say 12 slash 25. They've just been fussy cut out of pattern paper. I did also pull out the sticker book, but the sticker book actually has the opposite problem. Everything in that sticker book is tiny. So the ratios just felt really off to me. This is a collection that I have had in my stash for some time, but obviously because it's Christmas, I really only use it once a year. So I had totally forgotten about this problem. So I am definitely working with what I have here. I could have pulled from another collection, but I just don't scrapbook like that anymore. What I've got left in this line is what I'll work with. Things are getting serious. I'm gluing stuff down, locking everything in place. I do like how this turns out, but I have decided that I am not going to keep this collection in my stash. I have a bunch of Christmas lines already in my stash. This one is from a quite a few years ago. And to be honest, if I really, really think about it in my heart, I didn't enjoy making this layout as much as I normally would have because of the struggles with the supplies. And I'm actually okay with that. As I was gluing everything down, I did come up with an idea. I am going to use some Spiegel Mum scraps sequins to add. These are gonna add an extra layer of detail that I've not been able to get from the supplies. And I do too like that it's a little bit of sparkle. So I actually place them one by one. I was thinking about the snowflakes, but the color wasn't quite right. So I just went, you know what, let's just keep it simple and go with the white tones. And then, yeah, once I I place them all, I then go in with my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and glue everything down. Thank you so much for being here, my creative friends. If you like the way that I scrapbook or the way that I chat about the way that I scrapbook, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this one. Even more Christmas scrapbooking is right here. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, bye.